Hey, Valdosta, this is Shara Denton with Let's Talk Valdosta Podcast, and I'm here with my co-host, Marcus McConico, and we have a special guest today, Mr. Larry Ogden. Hi, Larry. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Great to have you here. Um, but we want to start, Larry, how long have you been with the city of Valdosta? 25 years. 25 years. And in those 25 years, um, did you move your way up in your current role? Yes. Back in 1997, when I was hired, I was hired as a sign helper. During that time, I went to get certifications. I took all the training opportunities that was afforded to me. A lot of people was, would turn down those training opportunities, but I was always eager to learn. So every opportunity to learn more about my job, I took it. Okay. And I'm from starting with the signs. Where where did we go to next? After sign, being a sign helper for about three or four years, the current supervisor at the time, he his employment with the city ended. So the opportunity came up and I applied for the sign supervisor position. And once I applied for that, I was given that position, a position I held for probably mm, 12 years, 13 years. Mm -hmm. And did that lead you to the current position you have now? Yes. Um, like I said earlier, I was always eager for training more mm -hmm. learning. So as a science supervisor, I was going further my education as far as supervisor classes, learning more about science markings, and just kind of cross-training with the signal division and other divisions in the traffic department. Um, I was, I, like I said, I was always eager to learn. I enjoyed it. So with all the classes in management, all the classes dealing with signs and markings and the classes with uh, the signals, I kind of fell in love with traffic. So when the opportunity came to be a traffic manager, I applied for it. So um, for those who don't know, what exactly does the traffic management manager do in the city of Valdosta? Uh, better question is, what doesn't the traffic manager <laughs> do in the city of Valdosta? Being the traffic manager, anything dealing with traffic, I usually get a phone call. Whether it consists of potholes, sidewalks, signals, pavement markings, road closures, accidents, even when it comes down to power failures. If there's a power failure in the city, I'm getting calls asking what's going on, when will the power be on, how quickly can you have it repaired? And that does not even fall up under my umbrella of job duties. <laughs> well, um, and we realize that traffic is obviously a big deal in the city of Valdosta, particularly a growing city. And I'm, how have you seen traffic, I guess, change here over the years? That's a good question. In 97, when I was hired for the city of Valdosta, traffic was heavy, but it wasn't really bad. And over the next 10 years, I saw a steady increase in the traffic. Citizens just getting out more, traveling, and just going about their regular routine. Um, I've seen the five-point area just boom with traffic around the mall. Everything just started growing and growing in traffic numbers increase. One of my duties consists of doing speed studies and I was able to do traffic counts and see what was the volume. So on the average daily count back in the 2005, five point St. Augustine Road, you may have had 17, 18, 20,000 vehicles in a 24 hour period versus in 97, 98, we may have had 12 to 13,000 vehicles. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a steady increase in the traffic flow and people coming to this community to live, work, and play. Unfortunately, with the COVID when it hit and then with the increase of online shopping, I've really noticed that the traffic volume around the mall has decreased. One of the major issues we had back in the day would be around Christmas time. Yep. Mm -hmm. We would get so many calls about traffic congestion, traffic problems, traffic backing up, we had to do something about it. So we would make time and change, use larger dials. So what I mean by a larger dial, everybody knew a minute is 60 seconds. We would increase the dial to 120, maybe 180 seconds to try to move traffic on the main line. Mm -hmm. But in the process, people on the sides had to wait a extremely long time. So part of my job was to try to help solve that problem. That consisted of working with the mall management and one simple fix that we did that helped out tremendously. We got to with the mall leadership. And as you enter the mall off of Norman Drive, the Norman Drive Home Depot at the signal, mm -hmm. we suggested that they block that entrance and make everybody take a right. 
Yeah. So when they started making a right, they had to drive all the way around the mall and they were noticing all these free parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So that helped out tremendously. So the back up on Norman Drive was alleviated. Plus, we made a timing change to where instead of having a protective left turn movement only, we had a protective, then it went to a permissive. So anytime in between the gaps, people could make that left turn mm -hmm. and get into the mall. So that problem has been taken care of. But like I said earlier, with the increase of online shopping, we don't have that many people around the mall, so we don't have those issues anymore around Christmas and Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. well, well, go ahead, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you while you were saying that, um, are there any misconceptions about traffic management or when you were talking about how the the area by the mall was and now it's a little bit decreased, is there any like misconceptions about how that is operated as far as traffic management? Because people think that you guys just press buttons and <laughs> it's so simple, but it's actually a little bit more intricate than that. Yes. People will always want us to make timing changes at an intersection. Mm -hmm. And what people do not realize about a timing change is a domino effect. We're running coordinated plans throughout the city of Adostra, Ashley, Patterson, Baytree, and around the mall. Mm -hmm. So we have, for example, the same intersection, St. Augustine, excuse me, Norman Drive at the mall. People go and say, well, you need to make a timing change there to make it better. Well, the domino effect is if I make a time and change at the mall entrance, I have to do a time and change at Bay Tree mm -hmm. and Norman. I have to do a time and change at Norman and St. Augustine mm -hmm. and all the way around the mall. So all those signals will have to be changed just because they want me to make a time and change at one signal. It doesn't work that way. It has to work in conjunction with the other signals so we can keep traffic moving quickly and safely. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, one of the things that that I can I hear from citizens or I see from citizens, particularly on social media, because everybody <laughs> has their opinion on social media, is that it, they think you can just do one thing and it fixes this problem. But they don't like you said it. If you make one change, you have to and you guys use data to make these changes. You're not just making a change randomly. Random. <laughs> That's correct. Before we make any time and changes in the city here, we will go out and do traffic counts. We need to know what the volume is at that intersection. So if we have an intersection that we're running 122nd dial, and a 24 hour period we have 12,000 vehicles. Two years from now, we do another study at that intersection and the volume has gone from 12,000 vehicles to 16,000 vehicles we need to make a timing change because that volume has increased so we need to find a way to move that smoothly now our job in the traffic division is we have to a good example a pie mm -hmm. when you cut a pie you want to divide that pie evenly where well, traffic is similar but is different when you have a four lane road north south east west and it's my job to divide that pie up between the vehicles on that road. Well, if Baytree has 12,000 vehicles and Norman Drive only has 4,000 vehicles, Baytree is going to get a larger piece of the pie mm -hmm. because I, got, I have yeah. to move more vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's our job to decide who's going to get what portion of the pie. Mm -hmm. And once we decide how much time we'll be placed in that intersection, we divide it between the north and south, east and west. And we also, what people don't think about, we also have to include pedestrian crossing. Mm -hmm. That timing has to be included in that dial. So they need to get their portion of it also. Mm -hmm. So it's not just go up there, we're just going to pull some numbers out of the air and plug them in. That doesn't work with traffic. You must have data, you must study it, and you have to know the science behind it. Average person, they say, well, how many seconds do you know to put on a crosswalk? Average person is going to walk anywhere from two to three miles an hour. Older people are even slower. So, if you got an older person who's trying to cross St. Augustine Road, you find out the width of the road. Most lanes average 12 feet wide. So, you're looking at roughly five lanes, 12 feet wide, that you have to go across. So, with that factored in, with the walking time, that would determine how many seconds of pedestrian cross time we'll put for them to make it across the roadway. Mm -hmm. Now, we always calculate on the slowest time. Now, younger people walk a lot faster, they <laughs> get on across there, but we have to look for the elderly population, make sure they have time to get across the intersection, the roadway safely. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like I said, uh, I think a lot of times people just think you change these. When you make a change, you think of it, you just do it willy-nilly. But you're, you got stats and information and data behind you before, well before that change is actually made. <clears throat> yes. And then you also, I've worked with you now for eight years. Uh, you also use our department to get that information out to people before that change is made. Yes. It is very important to be proactive. Citizens are very happy when you inform them of a change mm -hmm. that's taking place prior to it happening. A good example of a situation like that would be, it seems like Norman Drive is going to be the top of the road <laughs> of this <laughs> conversation this morning. Norman Drive and Baytree years ago was what we call se sequential phasing. It would go serve one, two, three, four. So it served in Norman Drive. Mm -hmm. Then it just served Baytree eastbound, Baytree westbound, then coming out of Office Max and the restaurant there. And no matter what time you got there, that sequence was going to serve, and you had to sit there and sit there and sit there. Well, once I became, became traffic manager, one of the first changes I wanted to do was eliminate that mm -hmm. because it made no sense for the citizens having to sit there such a long time, and there's no vehicles mm -hmm. on the other roads, the other lanes. So we eliminated that sequential, went to normal phase, and made some lane changing through scriping, and now it's working a lot better. So we eliminated a dual left off of Bay Tree onto Norman Drive, turned it into a single lane, added more timing to the turn movement. A lot of people say, well, how can you go from two lanes down to one lane? It's all in timing. Whereas before we had two lanes that we may have 15 seconds of Mm -hmm. Turn time, well, we increased it from two, decreased it from two lanes down to one. So we increased that 15 seconds to 30 seconds. And with the option of having an additional 15, 20 seconds, depending on how many vehicles go through with the passage. Y'all messed me up when y'all made that change, but I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, that was one of the cases where we did the social media. Mm -hmm. A lot of police department guys who had Facebook, they mm -hmm. put it out on their pages. And it was a growing pain. We had a That's lot muscle of muscle memory. Yes, we had a lot of citizens that called and said, "Why did you make that change? Mm -hmm. it, it didn't need. You need to put it back." A funny story. After we made that change, the high school was being built over there off of in a perimeter road, and the engineering department transferred a lady over to me, and I picked up as usual engineering department traffic division layer speaking, and she laid into me. Why they made that change at Bay Tree and Norman? This is the stupidest idea. They should have put it back. The person who did it is just a complete idiot. By <laughs> and she said, what do you have to say? And I said, ma'am, I'm that idiot that made that timing change. <laughs> did it get any better? She laid into me even more. <laughs> but once I explained what we were trying to do mm -hmm. and the reasoning behind it, she actually calmed down a little and gave it time drove the intersection more and I did receive a call back where she said it does work a lot better I don't have to sit there quite as long as I did before awesome. one of her complaints were when the train come and traffic back up how are we going to move all those vehicles I explained the additional time that we added mm -hmm. to the turn lane and once she saw everything I told her and she was able to go out and verify what I had <laughs> told her it made sense to them and that's the important thing about traffic if you inform people before the change and if they can go out and verify what you told mm -hmm. them, they're more comfortable with the change versus just hitting them all at once and they not know, know right. what's coming. Now, uh, we've talked a lot about traffic here. Let's, let's kind of brag on what your department's <laughs> done over the last couple of years. Now, just last week, we had um, the president of Georgia Tech yes. came in to um, – Previous years, we won the um, Smart Cities Award presented by Georgia Tech. Yes. And the Georgia Tech president was able to come down and see some of that technology. Um, what was it like to have the president of Georgia Tech coming down and see what we were doing here in Valdosta, Georgia? It was very exciting. But if I can, can I kind of give you the history? Of yeah, absolutely. That visit was three years in the making. It started when... The old technology that we were using was outdated. Everybody know with cell phones, every two to three years you need a new one. Mm -hmm. The technology we were using in the TMC was 12 years old, and it was hard to find parts. So I got with my staff, and we discussed other possibilities, other options, and they approached me with different 
um, technology. So one particular one was a Tim's unit. They brought it to me and they pitched it to me. I said, it sounds pretty good. So I did my own research on it just to see. So once I did my own research and I started what I was reading, I was liking. So I decided, let's take it up to the next level. So I had to pitch it to my department head. Well, once I pitched it to my department head, went in there feeling good about my research and everything, this technology is the next best thing. Went in the office, 30 minutes later I came out, everything I pitched to him, no, no, no. So the individual that went with me, he wasn't happy. Mm. And he looked at me and said, Larry, why are you not upset? I said, because one thing in my position, I take everything as a learning experience. Mm-hmm. So everything he told me no on, I wrote down the notes. I jotted down questions for myself. So I went back and did more research. Mm-hmm. So when I went back the next time, I was better prepared. So when I pitched that idea to him the second time, every question he had, I had a solid answer. Mm-hmm. Everything that he said no to, I had a rebuttal that changes no to a yes. So we took it to the next level to the deputy city manager and the city manager and convince them to buy into it. So city council agreed to spend $408,000 on the Tim's unit that gave us connectivity throughout the city, 128 intersections. Mm. After that purchase, the initial infrastructure was in place. We were approached by the Smart Cities grant. Hey, we like what y'all are doing. We see that y'all have this technology. We have a grant that would probably work, work really well with you all. So we, and one thing about grants, it's like every grant I've worked on, it's always rush. Deadline <laughs> to apply, mm-hmm. it's Wednesday, we got to have it submitted by Friday. <laughs> so it's, it's a short deadline, mm-hmm. but we rushed, we got everything submitted, and we won the grant. So that was in partnership with Georgia Tech students and Vado State University and the city of Vado State. So with that, we were able to purchase the preemption units for the fire trucks. We were able to increase our data so we can bring in the Travel Safely app and just get more things that we needed to make the system grow. So once all that took place, PIN, the Partnership of Inclusion and Innovation, they submitted our project to the World Smart City grant. And we were selected as one of the finalists. Out of 46 countries that had entries, Fight Officer was one of three, I think, in the United States mm-hmm. that were selected to participate and go over to Barcelona, Spain. So we went over there, the mayor and myself. Unfortunately, we did not win. The Port of Barcelona was the winner, but I was just excited to have the opportunity to, first and foremost, put Fight Officer on the world stage. Mm-hmm. Other businesses start looking at Vidalster. Vidalster is a smart city, connected city. So we're hoping other businesses wouldn't take notice and come to Vidalster. Second, having the opportunity to go to Barcelona, Spain, and represent Vidalster was an honor for me. Moving forward, after that, we were nominated for the 50 Smart Cities Award, which we actually won that when I flew to Columbus, Ohio, to accept that award. Then fast forward to last week. Mm -hmm. The president of Georgia Tech was doing his summer tour of the state, and I was honored to have him select the traffic management center here as one of his stops. So that showed the hard work between the Georgia Tech students, their faculty and staff, the Vidal State University students, faculty and staff, and the city of Vidalsta. That put all that into focus that people are actually noticing what we have done in the past and mm-hmm. things that we're trying to do in the future. So having him come, like I said, was three years in the making, but that was just one of the visits that the TMC had. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, and I know you, I was talking to you the other day, and you are like, that puts us well ahead of schedule Yes, by winning that grant because you're able to purchase this technology that you otherwise wouldn't be able to without the grant. That's correct. Yeah. The grant had goals and visions that we wanted to try to accomplish. And one of the goals, goals were to bring other agencies, other entities into the system because the Tim's unit has the capability of growing. I really want to bring Fight off the city school and the Lyons County school bus system on board. Mm-hmm. One of the major issues we have with Lyons County is having 
middle schools located out in the county because Valdosta has a county high school that's located within the city. Mm -hmm. So when those buses come trying to exit off the interstate, when you have 10, 15 buses coming at the same time, we can't go back to timing. We can't time that signal for when those buses are coming mm -hmm. because they may get there at 7.30 today. Next week they may get there at 7.45, so it's never constant. It's always fluid. If we were able to get the Lowndes County School System to purchase these units and put it on the buses, we could program our system to only operate with the signals around Lowndes High School. Mm. So they would preempt those lights on exit 16, exit 18, so they can come in and come out. People say, well, what's the difference? We have an officer on St. Augustine that's directing the buses to come out. Yes, that's great. But what happened when the buses get up to going to and the light is red mm -hmm. or twin and the light is red mm -hmm. or the interstate and the light is red? They still has to stop. But with the preemption unit, if that officer waved those buses on, mm -hmm. they would preempt those lights and get green and move through all those intersections. All the way out of town. All the way out of town. Yeah. Now, with right off the city, city that has a high school on perimeter, football <laughs> stadium by the college. <laughs> They have to transport those students every home game. Mm -hmm. We have at least three police officers that do a daisy chain, one in the front, one in the middle, one in the end. So when they come to the signal, one officer stop, and the one in the middle will gas it real hard to the next intersection. We have the lounge, this is about off the city school system purchase units. Same scenario. They will preempt those lights so when they leave the high school, if they come around perimeter to Beamers to north side, mm -hmm. they will get preemptive lights. If they come down Hill Avenue, the same thing. So we can eliminate a minimum of one of those officers. Mm -hmm. You have one in the beginning, one in the end. Mm -hmm. Or possibly to one officer or no officers, because if you have those preemption units spaced between those buses, it's going to send a continual mm -hmm. signal so they can move on through town safely. So that's what we're looking for with safety. So. That was one of the things that I hope would happen. Um, at the moment, it's not. We worked about a year ago, try to get on with a grant that will purchase all of the TIMS units, mm -hmm. the installation, and we'll be a pilot program for at least a year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't get that grant. So I'm still working trying to get something to bring it in to the buses. Next, South Georgia Medical Center approached us. They want to come and add their units to the system. Awesome. They have roughly, after speaking with their director, I think it was 15 units that space throughout the city, the county, up to Hay Hire, Adel, Lake Park. So if they have it installed in theirs, which currently they have them in four units. And it's four working, ambulances. Yes, and it's working really well. So they're preempting the lights as they're coming through. Now, some people say, why would you have preemption in fire trucks and preemption in ambulance? Well. The way it's set up currently, our fire department is considered Tier 1 or Priority 1, and the South Georgia units are considered Tier 2, Priority 2. So if we have them approaching at the same time, fire truck will get the priority, then it will work through the phases, and then the ambulance will have a chance to go through. So, But the chances are them going to the same place at the exact same time probably won't happen, but mm -hmm. it's working really well. Mm. Another thing that we... Our, one of our goals were to bring the city schools system onto it. Mm -hmm. Well, the technology we were using, scroke of luck, mm -hmm. it was running 3G technology, and cell phone companies stopped using 3G. Mm -hmm. So I could have spent per school zone flasher $4,000, or I can go ahead and migrate the old system to the new, the TIMS unit, for about the same price. Mm -hmm. I elected to go ahead and change over, so now we're running one system. So now we can control the school zone flashers from our TMC. We have a map that we can see all the school zone flashers. We can see where all the fire trucks are located. We can see where all the South Georgia ambulances are located on a map. So we're slowly going through with the goals of bringing all the things that we wanted to do three years ago. It's coming to pass, so I'm very excited about mm -hmm. it. And yeah, and for those to get back to those emergency vehicles, it, it's a huge plus mm -hmm. to have those lights and to give them um, greens all the way that they get there. Because time could mean between saving somebody's life and not saving somebody's life. 
in, in the emergency correct. situation. Yes. As you get older, you have a tendency to value time a little bit more than the younger generation. And one of our thoughts, suggestions, or thought process was per intersection, we will be saving 10 to 11 seconds per intersection. Mm -hmm. Well, once the system was fully implemented and our fire department personnel was trained, we came back and had other VSU students to come down and do studies. We found out instead of saving 10 to 11 seconds per intersection, it was 10 to 15 seconds per intersection. So common math, if you're going through six intersections and you're saving a minimum of 10 seconds, that's a minute. Mm -hmm. That can be the difference between life and death. Yeah. So that's one of the things that have come with the installation of this system. Well, Larry, is there um, anything else, you know, while we have you here that you want people to know about what's going on with the traffic management division and what you guys are doing over there? We're always trying to make traffic better and safer here in the city of Adostom. One of the things that we do, and I enjoy going out to different schools during career day, having the opportunity to speak with the young kids to explain, hey, this is what we're mm -hmm. doing. In the process of speaking to the students, the teachers, faculty, staff, they're listening also. And they're being educated on this is how tax dollars are being spent. Mm -hmm. So I try to be a very good steward of the citizens' money. Yes. We do not go out and waste money on things that would not benefit the citizens of Ad Austin. The Tim's unit, excellent purchase. I thank council for that and leadership for purchasing that over three years ago. The, the look in the kids' eyes when I pull up the laptop and all of a sudden they see all the cameras and all the traffic, and they're like, oh, you recorded that? I'm like, no, that's live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything that you see is being recorded 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number one question I get asked by adults, so if I run that red light, will I get a ticket? We do not have those cameras. We do not have red light running cameras. Our cameras are mainly for monitoring traffic so we can make sure traffic is flowing the way it's programmed. Um, I enjoy the opportunity of working with the VSU students, mm -hmm. the Georgia Tech students, being mentors, just trying to give them experience in the field because they're the future. Like I said earlier, I have 25 years with the city, so I have more years behind me than in front of me. So I'm helping prepare the next generation for them to take control of the traffic division and take it to the next level mm -hmm. because we, we have to invest in the future. We have to invest in the personnel coming behind us so they'll be better prepared. And then when they do take it, they can go ahead and take it to the next level. And I'm very excited to see that happen. Well, we're excited for you and the team um, in the traffic division because you guys you guys are kind of like quiet bulldogs, I call y'all. <laughs> um, they kind of keep sight, themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to just thank you for your time. We know you're a busy person. and. Um, we're excited for you and about the department and everything you guys have accomplished. And I'm sure there'll be many more opportunities for you guys in the future. And that's it for us today. At, uh, talk, Let's Talk About Asta podcast. Let's Talk About Asta is a presentation of the City of Valdosta's communications team. You can download this episode and previous episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Follow the City of Valdosta's social media accounts to learn about future episodes.